7.48, and it's a lot more of the countings, but I'd like to go to, we've dealt with different components over here before, I like to deal with, let's deal with Nazir a little bit this week. Page 758. Perek Vav, Pasuk Aleph, page 758. Bo natchil bi'ivrit. Va'achar kach nagia la'anglit. So I want to start for us in Hebrew. Leia b'chavod. Beautiful. Okay. So let's take that in English, please. Hashem spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, A man or woman who shall disassociate himself by taking a Nazarite vow of abstinence for the sake of Hashem, for new or aged wine shall, be, shall he abstain. He shall not drink vinegar or wine of, or vinegar of aged wine. Anything in which grapes have been steeped shall he not drink, and fresh and dried grapes shall he not eat. All the days of his abstinence, anything made of wine from grapes, even the pips of the skin, he shall not eat. All the days of his Nazarite vow, a razor shall not pass over his head until the completion of the days he will be a Nazarite for the sake of Hashem. Holy shall he be, the growth of his hair and his head shall grow. All the days of his abstinence for, Hash- for the sake of Hashem, he shall not come near a dead person. To his father or to the abstinence... Or to his mother. Uh, yes, to his father or to the addict, to his mother, or his brother or his sister. He shall not contaminate himself upon them for their death, for the crown of his God upon his head. All the days of his abstinence, he is holy to Hashem. Okay. So, why is this person man or woman, becoming a Nazir, how is it viewed from these psukim that we just read? And what are, or what can we say is a common thread between these special, special laws that he or she is adopting upon, uh, of, upon themselves? So this Nazir, we seem to be viewing it in a positive way, right? Lots of holiness. Koyimein is ro, kadoshu la Hashem. He is holy to Hashem, right? Ish visha ki yafli. Yafli, Rashi says, means yafrish, if he shall utter. I think that's how the, how the English put it, right? But also we say yafli, it's a lashon of pela. Pila plaim, hafla'a, wondrous. What is this person trying to accomplish here with becoming a Nazir? So what are the three laws particular to a Nazir? No inebriation, no grapes, wines, etc. The hair grows and not coming in contact with, with a male. Now, if these are good things, so then why aren't they part of our mitzvot? If they're not meant to be part of the mitzvot, 
then why are we praising the Nazir over here? Right? We keep, right, we say a few times, right? The last Pasuk, Kadosh Hu Hashem, he's holy to Hashem, right? The Yamim Hashem Yazir La Hashem Kadosh right? A number of times we have this. So, Nezer Lokav Al Rosho, the crown of God is upon his head. So, is this a positive thing? It seems to be a positive thing. So why isn't it for everyone? If it's not, how are we meant to view this Nazir? Is it because they want to elevate their souls because there's something they feel is not right or they've done something that they know is not right and they want to know? That's a possibility. I mean, we, we have karbanot, sacrifices that are brought when a person does something wrong. So then the karbanot are there to serve as a kapara, as a, as a redirect, as an atonement, as a wake-up call. Right? We don't find, though there is a story in the Gemara, which I'll, I'll relate soon, but the psukim don't seem to indicate at all that this is anything that there's anything wrong that was like, going on over here. It seems like it shows that they're giving because everybody is needing a certain level of Tohara or, you know, bring. But this is like a step above that it's not a must because... Okay, okay. So it seems that, you know, the, the to, you know, when it comes to the Rabbanan, when they make Gzeirot, they make a decree in order to safeguard something. So there we say that if they make a decree, she'en rov ha'tzibu yecholim la'amod bo, if they make a gzeira and they see that it's, most people can't, it's too much. It's not, it's not being accepted. It's, it's going beyond. So then that is not instituted. So it seems that the Torah, the taryag, the 613 mitzvot that we have, right, that is something for the, the Am, for everyone. Now, a lot of it is, you know, some of those mitzvot are just for a melech, just for a king. Some of them are only for koanim. Some of them are only for leviim, right? Some are only for men. Some are for women. We have those groupings, but we'll say that at least within those groupings, these are mitzvot that is relevant, that is something that can be legislated for the entire nation. But then there are certain things that are seemingly a step up. But, as Leah said, that's for those who want to take this step up, who feel that they are ready to take this step up. And, you know, very often when, I, when I'm meeting with potential uh, converts, people who are interested or inquiring about the conversion process. So one of the first things that I tell them is that A, from a Torah, Jewish Torah point of view, one need not be Jewish in order to have afterlife. So you're okay the way you are. This is the way that God made you, and you don't need to be Jewish in order to have eternity, to have an afterlife. And that's always something that resonates very deeply with me. Uh, it, it, it just, to me personally, it doesn't make sense, or it, it wouldn't make sense to me that you know, unless you become this religion, right, then there's going to be, you know, eternal damnation. When so many people weren't born into that religion, don't know about that religion, and weren't brought up with that religion. So how could God expect everyone to become a fill-in-the-blank? And if you don't become a fill-in-the-blank, or you don't believe in so-and-so, then you're eternally damned. Right? It, 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 that makes no sense to me. The, the only thing that makes sense to me 
is that you can have a religion that is particular and also universal. Meaning there is certain protocols, certain path that's laid out for those particular adherents of that religion. And then there is something else for the rest of humanity. Every other human being that we say in Pirkei Ava was created B'Tselem Elohim, in the image of God. So one of the first things that I say to them is you don't need to do this. If you're looking for God, you're looking for spirituality, you're looking for eternity, you're looking for the world to come, you're looking for paradise, you don't need one 758. You don't need to do this. At the same time, I said, realize that if you're signing up for this, it's serious. And there are responsibilities, obligations. And we don't view it as a smorgasbord. Oh, I like that, but I'm going to pass on that. All right? I said, you know, a person, you don't, no one has to become joining the Marines. But if you join the Marines, then there are certain rules of being a Marine. You can't join the Marines and say, but I don't like doing push-ups. Right? I'll join the Marines, but push-ups are not for me. It's not going to work. That's not going to work. So there is that which is relevant, applicable, shayach to every Jewish person. But here the Torah is saying that if you want more, there is a structured way of doing more, of raising the game, raising the level, going beyond. Now, what are these three laws, restrictions that apply to Nazir? What, what will they represent? So we have staying away from any wine, aged wine, grapes in general. That's one. Number two, we have the hair growing. And number three, we have not coming in contact with a mate, with a dead person. Even one's fathers, mother, brothers, sisters, funeral, tending to the burial, one is not allowed to participate. So what are these three ideas, concepts? How will they, how, how do they contribute towards this, this higher level that this person is attempting to, to reach? So, what do you um, say? I think wine represents the good life, uh, like, you know, enjoying or so. Good. Good. So, so, so let's deal with wine for a minute. So the wine is, is the pleasures of this world, right? We say that when, when Yosef and his brothers, when they had that meal, right? I think, I think he said that was the first time that, they, that, they, that, either, that either group, Yosef or his brothers, had had wine during all that time, right? You know, his wine is, is enjoying you know, this world, for those who enjoy wine, right? But, you know, but, but it's a certain level of, uh, of enjoyment, right? A and also, there's another component of wine. It could represent excess. Right? It could represent excess, and, and it can also, often does lead to uh, indiscretion, mm -hmm. Right? That we, with wine... Haman. I'm sorry? Haman. Haman? Yeah, he was indiscreet uh, when he went to Esther's dinner. Uh-huh. Could be. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but wine often, just in a simple sense, leads to, leads to, you know, drunkenness. And leads to, can lead to drunkenness and, and a lack of focus. Right? The Gemara compares... Um, yeah, you know, uh, 
a, a drunken person, right, lacks the the control. the discretion, the control. Okay, so that's wine. Good, right. So we can understand that this nazir wants to stay away a bit from the pleasures of this world. Okay, to to not be lured by all that which this world has to offer, which can drag us into, you know, down the wrong paths. Okay, good. Hair. Appearances. 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 Right? So, so nowadays, you know, long hair is, well, it was the rage, then it wasn't the rage, then it is the rage, now it's not the rage. You know, but... But we're talking about appearances, right? We place so much importance on our appearance, on the appearance of others. I think they say that a teacher has about seven seconds during which they can make their first impression on their students for the year. Seven seconds. Some, a ridiculously short period of time, right? Our impressions are the way that a person looks, what they're wearing, how they keep themselves, and just simply how they look. How they smile. How they smile, their expressions, whatever it is, right? So growing the hair means that I'm not... Focusing on the exterior, to a, to a great degree, we focus our own worth on the way that others view us. A lot of our own worth, our self-worth, is based on how we view, how we think others view us. You know, so often, you know, what are people going to say? You know, if I do this, people are going to, right? And, and, and I forget the exact quote, but, but the idea is people are thinking about you and talking about you a lot less than you think they are. <laughs> you think you're walking, everyone's going to be talking about you. Actually, everyone's thinking about themselves. And everyone's thinking about what everyone is thinking and saying about them, right? And that's what they're thinking about, not about you, right? You know, the, the, the Birkat Kohanim is the Yaseim, Yisra Hashem Panavilacha, the Yaseim Lecha Shalom. Shalom, peace, Shalem, completeness. Lecha in the singular, shalom, right? In other words, we have to find that peace within ourselves. And there is importance in the way that we present ourselves to others. We need to be, beinei, we say, v'yitem uh, nekiyim, you should be cleansed, clean, pure, beinei elokim v'adam, in the eyes of God and mankind. And we also have a picture about Eze Derek, what's the path that a person should choose for himself? Whatever is Tiferet Lo, right? It's a glory for him, right? In front of others. So that is a good safeguard. But essentially, the focus must be on am I doing the right thing? Am I proud? of myself. And that's why I, I like to say, you know, sometimes it's so, it's so energizing to do something good that no one else needs to know about. Because that's, that's validating me for me. Not because I want this person to think that and that person to think that but validating me for me. The same lecha shalom. Hashem should give you internally, unilaterally, within your own little orbit, 
to give you that shalom. So the growing of the hair means that the outside appearance is not what's going to be important. Right? Yeah. And that will then also affect how I view others. Am I fixating on their shell, on their outer shell, or am I looking further in, deeper, to understand who they are and what they're about, and what's what's motivating them, what's driving them, what what might have made that person react this way in this situation, even though my initial reaction, I can't believe that they did, right? But, whoa, (sighs) deep breath. Why might they have reacted that but way. But that's human nature's reaction. Though. Yes. And unfortunately, we're all at fault here because we do. We react, yes. We react yes. Our yes. 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 But but that's not the end of the story. That might be our starting point. But then our task is to work on that and to. And that's tough. Yeah, and to and to get beyond that. I mean, the example I love to give: we have a little kid, right? Little Ilan, right? You're that age, right? Right? Throwing a tantrum. You know, I hate you. Right? So, so what do you do? You pick up the child and you hug them. And you say, I love you. Sorry? It doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. But that that's the only thing you can do. Why? Because you, you understand that what this kid is saying isn't what this kid means. And this kid is just having this meltdown. This meltdown, uh, just, just overwhelmed by their feelings of whatever it is that they're feeling. And they just have this meltdown. They are just out of control of themselves. And you know that what they're saying isn't what they mean. And what they're doing isn't really representative of who they are, right? And you just hug them and hold them and try to help them calm down and, and kind of get back into themselves and regain control of themselves. With a two-year-old, it's easy to see that. When it's a 22 or a 32 or a 42 or a 52 or a 62 or a 72 or 82-year-old, it's a lot harder to see that. But in essence, in essence, it's the same thing. Nebuch. They're having a meltdown. Now, should they be in a better point of control at this point in their life? Often, yes. Sometimes events happen that is just overwhelming for anyone at any stage in their life. But you would hope that as they go 22, 32, 42, 52, they're getting more and more in control. But at the same time, that's their cheshbon, that's their calculation. But ideally, right, we need to try to get past our initial human nature, knee-jerk reaction, which is, I can't believe it, right? And to say, whoa, why is this person doing that? Can I empathize? Can I help? Right? And can I focus on, it's really not about me. Right? If they're lashing out at me, right? not that a person doesn't need to look at themselves and say, what might I have done to contribute to this? But essentially, it's not about you. It's what, what's going on with that person and all that that person is, is juggling and is dealing with at that time. So the Ta'ar Lo Yavor Al Rosho, the hair growing, is a way again of removing oneself from this world. Removing oneself from this physical, material, sensual world and trying to rise, trying to rise above that. And the third one, not coming in contact with a mate. It's just Dohara. I'm sorry? Okay, but why? Yes, that's correct. It's um, getting closer to the Kohenim. Getting closer to, I'm sorry? To the, to the Kohenim, to the Kohenim. 
Okay, good, right, good. This, this, this is a law that we find by the Kohanim. So why is it that the Kohanim... You know, I mean, one second. Why is it that the Kohanim, that the Kohanim, why is it that they can't be involved in these things? Right? We, we call those who deal with the burial, we call them the Chevra Kadisha. That's Kadosh. There's tremendous holiness over there. You're doing this incredible Chesed Shel Emet, this incredible kindness that will never be repaid by that individual. I remember I was so moved the first time I heard this. Uh, you, you don't really hear it here in America. But in Israel, the Hevra Kadisha, right after the... Well, the whole burial in Israel is, is a lot more stark. Here we use coffins. <coughs> That's American law. That's not Jewish law. Right? In Israel... The person is wrapped in their tachrichin, the special garments, burial shrouds, right? But it's 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 a white gar it's white garments that completely cover every part of the body, hands, feet, everything is completely covered. Right? A man is wrapped in a talit, and then the body is very <coughs> respectfully laid down in onto the ground. And then there are these blocks on either side, and the right, and the body is laid down there. And then other blocks are placed on top, and then the earth is so the earth doesn't go onto the body. The earth goes onto the blocks that are on top, and the person returns to the earth. It's 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 a real. I'm sorry. Yeah, but it's a very... What does that mean? Uh, to, 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 to the earth, the, the body returns. Mm. But it's a very moving and very unnerving... I mean, it, 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 it's an experience. I'm sorry? Disconcerting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it, it, it really hits you. It really hits you. But then the Hebrew Kadisha, they have this whole proclamation that they, write, that they read. They don't read it, they say it. And they say, so-and-so, the son of so-and-so, or the daughter of so-and-so. We have done everything according to our customs, according to our practices, that we understand them to be the best practices for you. And we've done it with, uh, to the best of our knowledge, we've done it with our utmost respect and reverence. If in any way we have overstepped, if in any way we didn't treat you in the respectful manner that you should have been, right? We ask of you mechila. We ask of you forgiveness. And please, when you ascend before the kisei kavod, before the throne of Hashem, be a melitz yosher, be a, a positive, strong advocate for your family, for us, for the nation. I mean, it's, it, 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 it's, it's very, very moving. South Africa, they do that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So why does the Kohen, why is the Kohen removed from all of that? <clears throat> why is the Nazir who's ascending to a higher spiritual level, as, as we're saying now, choosing to, to ascend to a higher level, why is that off limits for them? Is, is a chok a thing that we just don't a chok, understand? Yeah. A chok is, is a law that we don't understand the reason behind. Perhaps it's a chok, or perhaps we, could, we can see something, right? If it's a chok, it's a chok. Right? Even a chok, though, we often try to gain some. And I, 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 Rav Cook says a chok is something that applies in a different dimension, a different realm than we are in right now. All right? you know, so he speaks about shotness. Shotness is mixing wool and linen. 
right? So he says that that really applies, that's giving us a glimpse into a different domain, right? And right now we lord over the animals. So to us, to us, whether we're getting our garments from wool, animals, or we're getting it from linen, from flax, plants, it's all the same thing. But in time of Mashiach, there'll be a heightened sensitivity, right? I think he speaks about vegetarianism then, right? And then we'll understand that there's a difference, right? So we don't want to mix the two. So the not mixing the two now is giving us a glimpse of what will be, right? At, a, at, a, at an air, at a stage of a, of a heightened awareness and sensitivity. Jenna, what did you want to say about, about the mate? So... We also know, on the other hand, that since the soul leaves the body, that, that the body now has a lesser spiritual level. So when the Kohen has to always be ready to do a lot of um, things like entering the temple and be as spiritually elevated as possible for the, for the Korbanot to be acceptable, and similarly, if a Nazir wants to Okay, so you want to say that the body without the soul is considered uh, on a lower level, and therefore that, that okay, but still I I, I I'd like to understand a little better. But but what, uh, granted, but that was a that was a you know that was a trusted partner that did its job. Yes. You know, w- one of the things we spoke about on uh, on Shavuot is the idea of a machol, the circle that's made around, right? The, the, well, actually, on Shabbos, what about this? The, 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 that Ben Israel saw the angels involved with their digalim, and they wanted those digalim, right? right? What are the flags, right? The, 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 the digalim represents the different jobs that different people have, the different roles that people have. And, and what we saw that we wanted was that as long as I'm using my capabilities as well as I can, I'm no less, I'm no less important than anyone else. Everyone has different capabilities, everyone has, everyone has different strengths and different weaknesses. And what we wanted to know was as long as we are doing our best, we are second to none. We are, we are as, as important. And I look over here, the body, the body did its best. Why is there a tumor? It did, it's why, But why is there a tumor? It did whatever it could do. Why is there that tumor? Why is there? So you want to say, we've, we've, we've mentioned before, the, the, the potential that it had and no longer has. And, and it can't even do its best anymore in the physical Correct, way. okay. So okay, it, I hear I hear. Any other ideas about that? So I saw, again, I think from Rav Kook, a, a, a very, very beautiful idea. You know, there's a famous medrash. Famous medrash about twins. And uh, I've played it here before. There's a, if, if, if you want to go onto YouTube, put in conversations in the womb. And there's a, there's a beautiful song about this, on this medrash about these two twins in the womb. And one of them says, there's life after womb. There's life after womb. That there's more to life than this dark, constrained place. It's very warm. It's very comforting. We hear the heartbeat and we have each other. But I believe that there's something more afterwards. And the other one says, you're a dreamer, right? (laughs) What are you talking about? This is life. This is what it is. There's nothing more than this. And this is the debate that these two brothers are having in the womb. And then suddenly, their world starts to change. Their world starts to shake, to shake as the contractions begin. And the, the believing child is the one son that starts to go out first, 
And the other one says, no, no, don't leave me. I knew it, I knew it. It's coming to an end, it's coming to an end. I can't believe it, right? And then, and, 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 and then he hears the cries of his brother outside. He said, no, no, no. And then suddenly he's swept up also, right? And he hears the cries of Mazel Tov as the twin boys are born, right? And the, that's the parable. And the nimshal is us here in this world. And we're in the womb, so to speak. And we have the debates, is this all there is, or is there more? So to us, we look at the babies in the womb, we say, ha, 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 ha. But we ourselves, who are in this womb, so we struggle with it. And death, death is something that slaps us in the face. When we confront death, it slaps us in the face and that almost drags us down from our belief. It's over. This body that was alive is now lifeless, stiff, finished. A moment ago, alive, relatively vibrant, and now it's over. So the Kohanim, Rav Cook writes, who are there as our spiritual leaders, the ones who are meant to lift us up and carry us along and inspire us, they can't deal. They can't deal with this encounter with death which drags us down, which pulls us down and has this, this facade of mortality, this facade of the ending, this facade of there not being anything afterwards. So the Kohanim can't be involved in that. And the Nazir also can't be involved in that. So the Nazir is a person that the Torah could not legislate for everyone to be on this level, but those who do choose to be on this level, kadosh hu la Hashem, it seems, at least at this point, we haven't turned the page yet. Kadosh hu la Hashem. Now, don't try this at home, because if a person says, I become a Nazir, they remain a Nazir until they complete their term of Nazirus, which is not just a time amount. If a person says, I'll be a Nazir, then it's automatically 30 days, unless otherwise specified. Minimum 30 days. The Pasuk says, Nazir Yihyeh, Yud, Hey, Yud, Hey, 10, 5, 10, 5, 30. We learn that Nazir Yihyeh. He can pledge for more, but de facto, it's that. Okay? But then there are karbanot that need to be brought, sacrifices that need to be brought to the Beit HaMikdash. Nowadays we can't close it out, so a person will become a Nazir forever. Now let's turn to 760. rosh nizro. The person should die near him with quick suddenness and thereby impurify the head, so to speak, of the Nazir. The Gilach will show he needs to then shave off his hair. He brings Shnei Torim, O Shnei Bnei Yonel Kohen. He brings sacrifices. Vasat Kohen Echad LeChatat, VeEchad LeOla, and one is a Chatat, a sin offering. One is an Ola, and then he needs to start again. Chatat. Sin offering. Hmm. So what's the sin offering for if he's so holy? So this we can understand. Why the sin offering over here? Because he violated the part about mate. Good. He messed up. He or she messed up. Like he said, you don't have to become a marine, but if you do, you have to do your push-ups. Okay? 
So here they jumped to this level, didn't have to, chose to, but didn't maintain it, didn't do what you're supposed to do, that's a problem, right? You don't have to do it, but once you do it, if you're accepting it upon yourself, you have to follow through with it. Fair enough. That we hear. Let's go to Yud Gimel 13. Right? Completion of the term, it says in English. The Zot Torah Nazir. These are the laws or the instructions for the Nazir. Biyom Milot Yimei Nizro. On the day that he completes the period, the term of his Nazirut, he comes to Omoei. Vikrivit Karbano. And he brings sacrifices. Keves ben shnatotamim echad laola v'kavsa echad ba shnatotimra lechatat v'ayel echad tamim lishlamim. So he brings, he or she brings a chatat, sin offering, an ola offering, and a shlamim offering. Why is he bringing a chatat? Maybe because he just one second, just one second. Let, 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 let the question sink in for a moment. Just one second. Okay, Janet. Maybe because the person isn't continuing this program to stay on this more elevated level. Okay, good. So I I believe the Ramban, right? There are those that say that once you've ascended to that level, then how do you come down? Right? You didn't have to ascend to that level. You chose to ascend to that level. But you obviously haven't Right? But if you would have completed it, why would you want to turn around? Right. Why would you want to come back down? So that's how some view the chait. Right? I'm not so, so comfortable with that. Right? Because I could respect and appreciate that a person for a period of time said, I can do this for a period of time. But it's not something that I'm going to be able to maintain forever. But I don't know if we should look at it. Well, if you're not going to do it forever, then don't do it at all. I could appreciate someone. You know, there was a, a, if you've seen, there's there's a series of books, The Maggid Speaks, The Maggid. It all started with with, with stories about one particular Maggid, of Sholem Shwadron, of blessed memory, who was a Rav who lived in Yerushalayim. And I had the privilege of, of going to hear him speak a number of times. And he was a Magid. He'd tell stories and uh, amazing, amazing, funny, inspiring. It, it was incredible, incredible, incredible. During the entire month of Elul, which is when we start to get ready for Rosh Hashanah, from Elul, until I believe Yom Kippur, maybe I should, I believe Yom Kippur, he would have a Ta'anit Dibur. Ta'anit is fasting, Dibur is speech. He would not say anything besides Torah, Tefillah, prayers, Bracha. He would write things. If he needed to, Right, get something, but he would not say anything at all. Came Yom Kippur, though he wouldn't maintain that. We wouldn't say, "Oh, you did it till Yom Kippur. How can you stop now?" That was something special that he did during that time. And we say in general, during our Sereti made Teshuva, during the time of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, a person should accept something upon themselves a little more than they normally do, even if they know that the day after Yom Kippur, they're not going to continue to do that. And we explain to times that's not being hypocritical. That's being sensitive, respectful. That during this time, God is closer. 
I act differently when my Rebbe is in front of me. That's respectful. That's not hypocritical. <coughs> so the Nazir decided, or the Nazirat decided, that he or she wants to step it up. <laughs> I can't do this forever. I'll do it for a month. I'll do it for a year, whatever it is. But now I'm coming down. Why is that necessarily a chayr? I can hear. Once you're there, how do you come back down? But I can also hear that a person wants to step it up. But I can't do it forever. But we shouldn't say, if I can't do it forever, then I shouldn't do it at all. Right? That's not what we tell people. Rabbi, I want to try to keep this Shabbos. We don't say, well, if you're not going to do it forever, don't bother this week. Right? I want to give tzedakah on my paycheck this week. I, 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 I don't think I can keep on doing it. Well, if you're not doing it forever, don't do it. We never say that. We say, do what you can do now. And that is yours. Whatever you, good a person does is theirs forever. Even if they stop doing it, as long as they don't regret having done it beforehand. So I hear that, but I'm not... Yeah, you're right. I'm not, I'm not completely in on it. And they could still try and maintain that level, even, yeah. say, without... With, without the